Herman, you get your call from Mr. Bentley yet? Oh, not yet, sir. He said he was going to read my stuff and give me a call by the end of the day. Well, don't worry about it. My sources tell me you're a shoe-in for the job. <gasps> I'm happy for you, Herman, but I'm going to miss you when you're a big-time writer. But I'm sure you're going to miss us, too, right? Wrong. Once we're out of here, these people are no use to us. <laughs> Aren't you being a little callous? These people are our friends. She's right. I'm going to miss Hetty. Who wouldn't miss that golden blonde hair, those proud, heaving breasts, a nice, tight butt? But then again, I'm the sentimental one. Actually, I am feeling a little sentimental now. This city is exciting. Dangerous. Troubled. That woman's not wearing underwear. Is that all you can think about? Food and sex? Yes. I think this woman is wearing underwear. I think there's too many people in this elevator. And I think you are all idiots. Let's go to work. Doing anything special tonight, Louise? Well, I'll tell you one thing I'm not doing. I am not staying late again to help Mr. Bracken. I've caved in three nights in a row, and this time I will not capitulate. Louise, could you... Sure, I'll stay. Thank you. <laughs> Louise, I thought you were going to stand up to him. I did, but he wore me down, the merciless bastard. <laughs> hey, Louise... No, uh, Herman, Mr. Bentley has not called. Well, were you here Yes, the... I was here the whole time you were in the bathroom. Have you had that... Yes, I have had sexual fantasies about the guy in the lobby who runs the newsstand, but it's very rude of you to ask me that. Right, right. Just let me know if Mr. Bentley calls. Research. Hi, Mr. Bentley. Herman can't take your call. He got liquored up, took the petty cash, and went to the track. Hey! <laughs> Chill out, Herman. I'm on hold. Hello? Hi, hi, Mr. Bentley. Uh-huh. No. No. I understand. Oh, well, yeah, sure. Thanks anyway. Are you gonna be okay, Herman? I don't understand. I thought we had this job all sewn up. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? We can't cry like this in front of all these people. Oh, yeah. We gotta get out of here quick. Make something up before we embarrass ourselves. Oh, fine. I'll make something up before we lose our last shred of dignity. Mr. Bracken, I got a bad case of the runs. Could I hit the can? Oh, he seemed pretty upset. Shouldn't someone go after him? No. Let's leave him alone. Give him some time. Well, it's not like he's going to jump off the roof. All right, that was a tough one. But we're going to be just fine. There'll be other opportunities. Oh, blow it out your shorts. How long are we going to delude ourselves? It ain't going to happen, guys. You're always going to give the job to someone else, someone less talented than us. My God. God, I've never seen him so depressed. Me either. It's scary. He's drunk. He's angry. He's abusive. Which reminds me, we have to call Dad. <laughs> hey, back away from there! What are you, crazy? You think I'm just gonna stand here while you heave yourself off the building? I, I wasn't really gonna heave myself. Well, that's good. Because this is my building and my heave. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you, what are you gonna jump? 
I don't have to jump. That's why I climbed up here. I can just step. <laughs> hold, hold it, hold it. Let's talk about this. Uh, wh 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 what's your name? I'm Bob Smith. I'm a nobody. Oh, and it's not true. Have you ever heard of me? Well, no. Well, there you go. <laughs> but, well, come on. It's not like you've ever heard of Herman Brooks. You're Herman Brooks? From research? Yeah. Oh, it's nice to finally meet you. Yeah. Well, I gotta kill myself. Well, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Whatever has you upset? Come on, Bob, it can't be that bad. Not that bad? You try being with the same law firm for ten years and never making partner. Ten years of being passed over. Well, let's see how easy it is to pass over me when I'm lying flat as a pancake in front of that door. <laughs> Bob, give yourself a chance. Come on, I'm, I'm sure you'll bounce back. Ah, oh, it depends where I land. <laughs> hey, listen, Bob. I know what you've been going through. Trust me. Trust me, Jay. Herman's already gone. That doesn't make any sense. We're supposed to go to a concert tonight. Well, I got an extra ticket now. You want to go? I can't. I got to stay late and help Mr. Bracken, the old toad. <laughs> I'm Chris Getty. Yeah, right. <laughs> Ask me what? <laughs> I got an extra ticket to a concert, so Louise said I should ask you if you want to go. So ask me. Wait, you want to go? Yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry. The thought of me going out with you just makes me laugh. Hey, it made me laugh. I was laughing first. <laughs> oh, look, I'm still laughing. <laughs> well, let's face it, there's no point in us going out. Eventually, sex will come up, and you and I both know we only use sex for personal gain. Hey, I know. I use it to try to get ahead, and you use it to brag about how much you've scored. So, basically, we're of no use to each other. It goes without saying, Eddie. I'm sure your exploits pale compared to mine, but <laughs> otherwise we're too much alike. Pale? Pale compared to yours? You think so? Well, let me ask you. Where's the, where's the weirdest place you've ever done it? Anatomically. <laughs> Although I'm enjoying the visual, I meant uh, geographically. Mount Rushmore, right under Lincoln's nose. Luxury box, Toronto Sky Dome. That was you? Inside the park home run, baby. All right. Strangest position. Standing on my head. You? Standing on his head. Oh, no, the elevator's stuck. <sighs> Standing on his head? Hmm. Lights just dimmed. Either that or I just had a stroke. <laughs> no such luck. Something bothering you, Louise? Well, there is, but you probably don't want to know about You're it. You're probably right. But I don't think I should keep it bottled up. I really urge you to. No, I need to communicate my feelings. No, trust me. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I want to know why it's me who always has to stay late. Because you're a team player? What team? The team went home. Well, you see, you're getting upset. I'm starting to feel uncomfortable. No good can come of this communication business. I just want to know why it's me who always has to stay late. Why? Frankly, Louise, because I know you're always available. Well, I'm not available anymore. I quit. How's that for communicating? I still think bottled up is the way to go. For three long years, submitting my stories all over town, praying for a break, and, and I'm still in that crummy research room, and every year, someone less talented gets the writing job that should have been mine. Wow. Now I'm more depressed than I was before. <laughs> Which all brings me back to this jumping thing. <clears throat> Wait a minute, Bob, didn't you hear what I was saying? I'm like you, I share your pain. Oh, great, now I have to share my pain with you. That's all I had before was my pain. I had my pain and I had my keys. Oh, great, now you have my pain and some guy down there has my house and my car. Oh, and some of my pain. Listen. Oh, oh, thank God. Up here! Hey! Yeah, he's up here! Hey! Oh, one lousy fire truck. Boy, that's typical. Well, all right. I'm taking the plunge. 
I wish I had some gum. I hate to have my ears pop on the way down. Maybe I'll just yawn a lot. Hey, uh, I, I, I have some gum. I have gum. Oh, yeah. Why are we offering him gum? I think we should get away from this lunatic. I am trying to distract him. Anything to stall. No, let's leave it to the professionals. There's hookers? <laughs> well, what are we wasting our time with this guy? He's a bitter loser and a dead-end job. That's right. Does it sound like someone we know? Hmm? It's us! I was gonna say us. Of course, us. <laughs> Wait a minute. This has artificial sweetness. You know what this stuff does to you? Don't you read? <laughs> well, hey, hey Bob, Bob, how would you like to go out for a drink with me, huh? Uh, yeah, maybe we could compare notes on being screwed over. What do you say, huh? You, you, you pick the place. Cyclone roller coaster. Front seat. <laughs> Riskiest place you ever did it? I guess it would have to be that bridge. A bridge? That's not that risky. This was the bridge of the Exxon Valdez. <laughs> Great sex, but that one came with a price. You were on the Exxon Valdez. Did you try the phone? I just did. I got music. Well, try it again. All right. What the hell is taking so Shh, long? Okay. Is someone there? The hell song is this? <laughs> Radar love. That's a weird choice. How can you be so calm? We are stuck in a little wooden box 20 floors up. I have an idea. God, you're gonna get killed! What? Are you serious? Hetty? Hetty? It's a stalled elevator. It's, it's safe. Totally safe. Happens every day. Really? Of course. Nothing to worry about. Unless the building's on fire. What did you say? The building is on fire! <laughs> That's it! I'm gonna jump! I'm gonna kill myself! Bob, the building is on fire. Oh my God, I'm gonna die! <laughs> Sure, that's easy for you to say. You're an optimist. I used to be an optimist. But even then, I knew it wasn't going to last. Okay, okay, try being an optimist now. Look, we'll just get down to the lobby, we'll get out in the street, and everything will be fine. Then again, the roof does offer a variety of fun options. Can't get the hatch open. Uh, okay, Al. Al. Eddie. What? You're standing on some uh, uh, serious vertebrae there. Oh, sorry, is this better? Uh, no. Uh, Hetty, I understand this counts as foreplay for you. It's breaking my neck. It doesn't matter. I can't get that damn thing open anyway. <clears throat> Hetty, look, we're not going to die. If we were, wouldn't you want to do something special with your last few moments on Earth kind of thing? What are you talking about? Well, we both agreed stupid for us to even consider... Having sex, because we're both so alike, and yada, yada, yada. But if this whole thing... Are you serious? I don't know. Think about it. If this whole thing were to end in tragedy, would you want to go out with a bang or a whimper? <laughs> or both? Fine. You win, Jay. If you can even suggest doing it in a flaming elevator while we're dying, then you are the champ. Now, leave me alone. Well, it's no fun to win by default. <laughs> hey, come on. We're going to get out of here. Eddie, come on. Research. How many people left on this floor? I got that information for you. Oh, God. What am I doing? Listen, it's just me. It's me, Louise Victor, and my boss. Smokey. The situation on the stairs has not changed. <coughs> Oh, Mr. Bracken, what are the signs of smoke inhalation? <coughs> Burning lungs, nausea, endless coughing. After that frat party, I swore I'd never use a bong again. What, what are you doing? I'm trying to get help. Hello? 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 Does anybody give a rat's ass about us down here? <laughs> Unbelievable. 
Are you okay? Oh, I'm great, Hattie. I'm loving this. I just, I love being stuck in a little tiny room with bad paneling. Are we starting to get a little panicky? No, we're a lot panicky, okay? Well, we've been in here a long time. Why now? Well, I was able to put it off for a while, especially since I thought you might want to, you know, <laughs> have my priorities. But ever since you said no, panicking's moved right up to the top of the list. Jay, look. You told me that we were going to be okay, and I believed you. Now I'm telling you, it's going to be okay. Yeah, okay, okay. I just, it feels like the walls are closing in, you know? God, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. <laughs> Slap me one more time. No, I'm hornier than ever. <laughs> Bob, listen, I think I can jump to the next building. See, I just wanted the people at the law firm to look up and go, Oh, look, it's Bob! About to jump off the building. Maybe he is partner material. Okay, I'm gonna have to give it a try. I'm a decent lawyer, damn it! I always did everything that was asked of me. Oh! Herman? Oh, I stubbed my toe. Ah. Oh, who cares about your toe? What about my toe? I've got toes too, you know. I've got almost ten of them! Bob, do you hear what you sound like? No, what do I sound like? Pity me! I got no door! I got no keys! I got no toes! You can't keep whining all the time. I have legitimate beefs. I'm tired of people being promoted who have less talent than I do. Sound like someone we know? Look. This man is clearly deranged. He probably doesn't deserve to get promoted. We, on the other hand, have been passed over unjustly. Well, maybe not. Maybe we don't deserve it either. Maybe we're not good enough. Not good enough? What exactly are you saying? I am saying that maybe we could be a better writer. Maybe we could improve. We don't need to improve as a writer. We know all 26 letters of the alphabet. Except for February, which has 28. <laughs> I think it's time that we take responsibility for our failures. Or we could keep doing what we're doing and end up on the rooftop, ranting like Bob Smith. Mr. Bracken, hmm? do you have any regrets? Well, right about now, I regret I didn't take that job on the first floor. <laughs> no, I have big regrets. For instance, I regret that I never saw Paris. And I regret that I never had children. And I regret that I never celebrated St. Patrick's Day by dressing in green, drinking my body weight in beer, and singing the dirty version of Danny Boy in the reference room of the New York Public Library. <laughs> oh, believe me, Louise, this is not what it's cracked up to be. You know, I do regret that I've been making you stay late with me. Oh, well, you know, there's work, there's work. Oh, there isn't that much work, Louise. Lately, when I get home, Margaret's either out with her friends or in bed reading a book, and I guess I've been creating work and using you to keep me company. I'm sorry. Well, I guess that's what a right-hand gal is for. That's exactly what you are. Louise, did we just share a very personal moment? Yes, we did. Well, let's not do that again. I hear you. <laughs> Walking down Canal Street, knocking on every door. <coughs> you okay? <coughs> you all right? Yeah. <laughs> maybe we should stop singing, huh? Oh, maybe. Those lyrics were pretty raunchy. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Thanks for teaching them to me. <laughs> My pleasure. <sighs> oh, your eyes are still watering. Yeah. I can't tell if it's the smoker or our rendition of Story Story Night. <laughs> About that contest. I'd hate to lose, but I'll settle for a draw. Fellas, can you just give us two minutes? Really? You're sure? Really? Yes! Oh, Mr. Bracken, it's over. We made it. Yeah, we made it. Hey, Louise, 
What do you say we go down to McAnally's and have a beer and celebrate? Well, you know, Mr. Bracken, I was thinking that maybe the reason your wife spends so much time with her friends is because they talk to her. I think you ought to go home and talk to your wife. Beer sounds a lot more tempting. All right, then, let's go have a beer. And while we're at it, I can open up to you about some excruciatingly painful female troubles I've been having. You know, Louise, you're right. I need to spend some more time with my wife. See you tomorrow, boss. I mean, all I wanted was a pen. What, that's so much to ask for? A pen? Bob, it's over. It's over. The trucks are leaving. What? Now look. Sure, you bunch of pansies. Leave us the fry up here. Bob. They're leaving because the fire is out. Oh, sure. Don't tell Bob Smith. You told him. Come on, let's head on down. Okay, good. I think I'll take you up on that drink now. Boy, I've got stories to tell you. The way people have screwed me over. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going out for a drink tonight, Bob. Uh, I actually have something else I have to do. What do you have to do? Yeah, what else do we have to do? We almost died in a fire. I say we celebrate the precious vitality of life by drinking ourselves into a coma. <laughs> what do we have to do? Well, actually, what I had in mind was dropping by the new school and signing up for some classes in writing. Oh, now you're talking. Herman Brooks doesn't give up. No more negativity, no more blaming our problems on others. I don't blame our problems on others. He does. <laughs> it's just that I have plans. All right, I understand. Some other time. Yeah, some other time. Well, let's get going. Sure! Big fire! Oh, there's a big fire here! Oh, look! They sent a police car! Oh, it's just a cab. Look, Bob. Oh, I get it. A cab. This way, if I jump off the building, when I land, I can get a ride home. Oh, good. Well, you'll get no tip. No tip at all. It's new. It's better. It's X-14. You know, if you were smart enough to buy the first Superman comic book, it'd be worth a fortune today. Absolutely. If you'd bought the very first Swatch Watch, you'd be glad, right? Hey, I bought the first Clapper. Yeah. But you'll be able to tell all your friends you saw the very first George Carlin show. It's the comedy series premiere with George Carlin this Sunday after an all-new Married with Children on Fox.